Di quella birra l'orrendo fuoco Tutte le fibre marciano un po' E più spendi And welcome to Sapori, here we are again and we got a new show, we're starting our new season and so Dominic, why don't you just tell us what are you cooking? What's Dominic cooking today? Well, you know we're gonna do some uh, two or three dishes with broccoli lava. I think people are intimidated in how to cook it, they don't know how to cook it, and they don't know how good uh, this broccoli lava is really good for you and how easy it is to cook it. So we're just gonna give you a few of my uh, steps, simple steps that you can do at home, and the many variety of dishes that you can cook with them. And uh, you find that delicious and easy it is to do. Uh, the first thing you do is I got... Uh, Dom, I'm going to let you go on. Okay, I got two bunches of broccoli up, nice and fresh. Uh, I got about four quarts, about a gallon of uh, water. But what I'm going to do with that water is, one of the, 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 the trick is I put in uh, like uh, a teaspoon of uh, baking soda. Don't overdo it because with the baking soda it will help you preserve the color and help it cook it. So I'm going to put some baking soda in there. Don't overdo it in the baking soda, otherwise your broccoli or any veggies that you cook, you put a little baking soda, it preserves the color. Uh, this is about, about a quarter of a half a cup of salt. You want to season the salt. Now, with the broccoli now, don't want to put all of it though, so we cut off about, a, about an inch, inch and a quarter. Some of these things are a little tough. What I like to do also is just cut it to the, the middle or the end a little bit. This will help it cook a little bit to keep it tender. So I'm gonna do this. Sometimes you gotta cook them, you know, cut them longer than others, but, and just what, by doing this, it just, it helps the, the broccoli take that ten, you know, the, the, the bottom tend to be a little tough. So now I'm gonna put them in cold water to rinse. So I'm gonna rinse them in cold water. And I like to keep in a bunch, it's easy to, to to wash it and just throw them in there. And they should cook about five, six minutes. You don't want to overcook and you don't want them undercook. So, and this it's easy to, to wash them in a bunch. There we go. There we go, we got them in there. Now we're gonna push it down. And like I said, we're gonna keep an eye on it and uh, let them cook. And then we strain them and uh, we get all of them cooked to the last. Here we go. And you see a nice with the bacon soda that the color remains, you know, true. So whether anytime you blanch anything, you put a little bit of bacon soda, you'll be surprised how it keeps the color. But like I said, you just gotta watch, you can overdo it because then it makes it too much mush. So that's gonna cook. So while that's cooking, let me clean this off. Clean this off, and what I like to do is uh, another thing with the thank you, Lillian. We do a broccoli rabe. Uh, this is the tiny sausage and broccoli rabe raviolis. What we're gonna do with this? We're gonna uh, fry them. So over here, I got some a cup of flour. I got a cup of uh, cornstarch. Mix it together, and if you do this make sure and you have extra you can use it for your cutlets uh, for anything else i like to make sure of a half and half of a uh, uh, cornstarch and flour because it makes a uh, it seals it it makes a product more whether it's chicken and veggies or whatever more crispy so we got the flour mixture i'm gonna put that on the side now i'm gonna get the yeah i got a bowl there now you can give me that that's fine I'm gonna put, put the raviolis, I'm gonna break them up and put them in the, in the flour. There we go, these will add a little bit, but if you do it frozen, it's easy to separate them. And I'm telling you, you try these for, uh, whether you have it for, for your family, if you have a, fa uh, uh, a party, it's delicious. We're gonna, have a, we're gonna make a marinara pesto dip to go with it your friend or your family will enjoy this. So these, this, they separate them. So we're gonna separate these. We're gonna push Give the broccoli up. Let me check the broccoli up. They boil it nice. 
like I said, it holds the color really nice. And uh, I do urge you the, the cocoa pot, you know, the broccoli rub, like the old cell, they're bitter, this and that. Not necessarily, they, it's really that they're not bitter at all. So I guess you get used to them. So I got three eggs that I'm gonna break. There we go, thank you. Just gonna season them a little bit. Just gonna beat them a little bit. There we go. Now what we're gonna do is, we, first we're gonna put them in the flour. See how nice with the cornstarch with it? Oh, thank you, Lily. See, they coat it nice. I'm gonna put them in there. This is fresh, plain breadcrumbs, it's homemade. We don't, and like I said, whatever you got left over, you put them in it's like what it's flour or bread. You keep it in a, put it in a, in a bag, and you keep it in the refrigerator, and you can use it over and over again. So we're gonna fry, fry these up, and just put them on the side as soon as the oil is ready. Throw them in there a few more, one of them, a few more at a time. Okay, as you can see, it's about four or five minutes the broccoli up is done. I don't want to overcook them. See how nice and maintain the color. You you squeeze them, they're done. Just gonna put them in cold water. Beautiful. Just to shock them a little bit and then we strain them. And then we'll put them on the side and we're gonna we're gonna saute them. Okay, so now we're just gonna strain them a little bit. Cut them in cold water, I'm gonna strain them. There we go. Like I said, the color is, that holds it. Beautiful, let them strain. But we cook the raviolis. Okay, as you can see, with with uh, with uh, we put the raviolis in the flour, the eggs and the breadcrumbs. We just lay them up here. Now we put them in the oil. We got some oil cooking up over here. We're just gonna throw them in there, and it just got a brown. Really, they don't have to cook, and it becomes nice and crispy. Yeah, beautiful. Just a couple of minutes. Then we drain them. And then we make a nice dip for it. See the bunch the fresh breadcrumbs are nice and steaks it. And the inside keeps it nice and crispy with the flour. We have a nice color. Beautiful. Okay, now we put a few more in there. I urge you to try these, they're delicious. As soon as we're done, we're gonna have some of these a little, and you're gonna enjoy these. And uh, for an hors d'oeuvre, when you have company, like I said before, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy it. I don't wanna to put too many, because it's gonna lower the, the heating, the oil, the temperature of the oil, but this is perfect. And this oil, you know, if you're at home, you could just, let it cool off and save it for next time, or so you could reuse it. You don't have to. If you want to use a little oil, less oil, you could do that too, which is fine. There we go. And with that sauce and the, and the pesto, it's really a nice uh, combination. Beautiful. Okay. Is that done? We got one more batch. I put it in here to strain them a little bit. Yeah, in the home you can put it on a paper towel. Okay. I think we've got one more batch to make and we're good. Okay, as you can see, the raviolis are nice and fried up. We're just gonna put it, place them on the platter. I got some marinara sauce here in the middle. Oh. 
I can say if you want to have your house, you put them in a dish, spread them around nice. Now with the marinara, I warmed it up. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of uh, pesto and then marinara. If you want to, you could sprinkle a little grated cheese on these. That's fine too. Okay, so I got, I'm going to put two tablespoons of pesto. We're just going to stir it. And we're going to dip it. Come on, Lenny, let's dip one. Well, I'm ready. I'm down for that. No double dipping, okay? No double dipping. <laughs> that looks great, Dominic. Ah. They're nice and hot. Beautiful. Wow. Mm. That pesto really kicks the, uh, you know, the marinara. It's simple, but it's all, you know, impress your friend mm. and your family, and they're really good for you. It's broccoli up, sausage, we either got hot that or sweet. That is outstanding. I like the way the, uh, the, the cornstarch, uh, yeah. The flour makes it yeah, nice and it, crispy and the yes, bread pumps. So we're going to have another one, and then we're going to cook uh, the broccoli up with the pasta. Oh, after we enjoy the ravioli, now we're gonna do the, some uh, shells with the, with the broccoli up. We're gonna have some uh, olives, and uh, I'm gonna put some pancetta in there. Like, if you don't have to, you, you don't want to, you keep it like that, but today we're doing the show, so we're gonna have some uh, pancetta. I'm gonna put the pasta to cook this way. Uh, it takes while it's cooking, we could do the sauce. I'm gonna throw the pasta in there. These are, these are baby shells. Okay, I got the frying pan on. I'm gonna put some olive oil. I'm gonna put it with a cup. Over here I got some uh, onion. Chopped up onion, but I have put a cup now. As I told you before, before the onion, they got a little bit of sugar in there. A little salt, I'm just gonna Stir it this way, it won't burn on you. I'm gonna throw it in there. Caramelize nice. I got the pancetta. I got this about three thick slices. Like I said, you don't want, you don't have to put it in if you don't want to. I just we all like it here, so we're gonna put it in there. If you don't want to, you could put sausage, you could put chicken, or just leave it, you know, leave it plain. You don't have to do anything to it. But uh, we just like pancetta, it gives it a nice flavor. We don't want to do it with the sausage, but we go with the pancetta. There we go. The other thing that I like to put in is a, it's a couple of uh, four or five anchovies. If you don't like, you'll never taste them, they'll just disappear on you. Put it in there, and like I said, we're gonna cook it. We're gonna stir the pasta. Uh, this is broccoli up. And uh, the other thing is, if you had to saute the broccoli up, or just put olive oil and garlic, which we might do later with, uh, and make a sandwich with it, you keep it in the refrigerator. That's the beauty of broccoli up. After you drain it, you just put some uh, olive oil, some garlic, you saute a few minutes, and you can use it as a side dish. You can make a, a, a sandwich. You put in the sandwich, you put some uh, fresh mozzarella, and you bake it. If we have time today, we might do that, I'll show you. But if not, it's really easy. As you can see, this is cooking. I'm gonna lower the heat a little bit. I like to put some uh, piece of calamada olives, pit it. It gives it a little tartiness to it. You don't want to overcook it too much and okay then we're gonna get the broccoli down I'm not gonna use all of them because we're gonna 
make a sandwich. What I like to do if you make it with the with the pasta, I like to cut it up a little bit. This way you don't get all the you know big pieces. You, you cut it up nice, small, so it's easy to cook. Just gonna throw it in there. Beautiful. Now we, we we don't have to season it because we got the garlic in there, I mean uh, the pancetta, we got the anchovy, so if you want to put some pepperoncini to make it a little spicy, okay, but the salt we will adjust it at the end if we need to be. I, I won't even put any. I got some roasted pepper. These are nice homemade roasted pepper. If you want to use fresh tomatoes or sun-dried tomato, you could do that. But for this kind of recipe, I like the the roasted pepper. It gives a little sweetness to it. I, you know, with the because you got the olives in there, it gives it a nice contrast. Got a nice color too. Then I'm gonna put some. Chicken stock with just a little broth. There we go. This doesn't have to cook too long. Just to saute a few minutes. You can see it. It's starting to take up a little bit from the, the broccoli knob. And it's a really nice combination. And once the pasta is cooked, I'm going to just throw it in there. So with the heat a little bit, and uh, it should be done in, just let me, I'm gonna taste it a little bit for salt. Mm, it's good. Cause the anchovy and the pancetta I said before, it's just right. And later we're gonna put some, um, some um, Sicilian, um, Sheep's uh, cheese with a little pepperoncini. We shred it on there, so that's gonna give it a little bit of a kick. Okay, as you can see, the pasta, oh beautiful, the pasta is done al dente. The broccoli naba cooking with the pancetta, the onions, the garlic, and the, the, the roasted peppers, it really gives a nice sweetness to it. Let's put the, the pasta in there. Let me shut this gas off, the pasta is ready. Beautiful. There we go. Ah. If a little water goes in there, it's okay. It gives it a little eggs and broth. Beautiful, this is done. Now over here, I got some tiny cream cheese. I'm gonna throw it in there. Mix it all up. See that beautiful color? from the, the broccoli down. As you can see, it's, when you cut them, they don't have those big long strings of broccoli down, but the cheese is melted, the Italian cream cheese. There we go. It gives it a little, most of like it brings everything together. I just want to put a, a tablespoon of olive oil in there. I'm gonna shut the gas off. Oh, got another little piece of cheese. Okay, now I got, as I was saying before, this is a table cheese. It's made out of sheep's milk with the pepperoncini from Sicily. You could eat, it's delicious. I'm gonna just wanna shred it in there. It's soft. It's got a little bit of the red pepper in there. Just to give it a, just enough, uh, a little kick, a little bite in there. And, and we'll just melt the cheese, we'll melt a little bit and coat everything and bring it together. It's about a quarter of a cup. I'm gonna stir it all together. This doesn't take too long to make. Come home the family for friends I said and you know what it's it is even better left over the next day so this is done 
Okay. I'm gonna put it in the, in the dish. Oh, I think only smell it. Mm, those olives really give us a nice. Go to the last drop. Here we go. That, that, that broccoli up just coats it so nice with the cheese. It made a beautiful, nice green color. Now we just put a little more cheese on the top before we sold it. And uh, here we are. The shells with the broccoli up, roasted pepper, olives, some uh, onions, uh, and some roasted pepper. Back away. Just leave it up. Okay, last but not least, we got some olive oil, we got three cloves of garlic. With the rest of these broccoli up, we're just gonna saute it a couple of minutes. We're gonna make a nice sandwich with fresh mozzarella and sun-dried peppers. And this, if you do a lot of it, you just keep it in the, in the refrigerator. And you can use it the next day and stay a week with no problem. You feed it as a side dish, you can make sandwich. Okay, so stay a little bit. Put it over here. Now we're gonna make the sandwich. This is an Italian roll. We're gonna put some fresh mozzarella. Gonna put the broccoli off. Oh, that garlic. You smell it? Man, that looks delicious. With the olive oil, the broccoli up. Put some over here, let the, some of the bread absorb the oil. And this is a great lunch. Lunch anytime, it's really... Here we go. Now we're gonna put, over here we got, this is sun-dried peppers, if you wanna use, if you don't have that, you, you can come here together, you can put sun dried tomatoes. If you want to put fresh tomato, you can put some fresh tomato, put it on there. Put some more fresh mozzarella. If you don't have mozzarella, you can use provolone, Swiss cheese. You put it on top of there. And then what you do is you wrap this up in aluminum foil and you just bake it about a few minutes. Just put some uh, extra olive oil virgin on, on the bread, cut it in half and bake it and it's still really delicious. Let's cut and see what the, the middle looks like. There we go. Hey Dominic, so that's what Dominic was cooking today. Broccoli Rob over here at Sephora's. That looks delicious. It's Boy, I love broccoli up. Give it a try. Don't be intimidated by it. You'll really get a kick out of it and you enjoy it. And good it's job. good for you. Good job, Dominic. So we want to end the show. We're going to close it up. We want to thank you, the audience, for watching. Stay tuned for more shows with uh, Dominic Cooking and Sephora's. Thank you. Y fue la vida, lo rendo foco, tu te le vibre, marce rempo. That's a pretty powerful word, huh? Yeah. Hey, I'm Anne. Hi, Julie. I hope I didn't look that lost, did I? No, <laughs> not at all. I'm one of the Relay Committee members, and we, we really try to meet as many people at the event as we can. This is my second time at Relay. I was just looking a bit worried, thinking about when my mom was diagnosed with colon cancer. It seemed like that was all we had to hang on to. When my dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer, we held on to hope every day. And I didn't realize how much I was going to need Relay to help me get through the experience of losing my father. I was so glad somebody asked me to come here <laughs> years ago. And I'm really glad you're here too. Thanks. So, uh, whose team are you on? Margaret's Marchers, in honor of my mom. <laughs> awesome. We have a really great group of friends with us. It's just, 
That's so amazing to me how many people are here, how much this means to everyone. How did you guys get this many people to come out? We just asked people. What did you actually say to them to get them to come and form the teams and raise funds and everything? I mean, it's incredible. Well, we just told as many people as we could the Relay story. The one about how they're fighting cancer and providing hope? <laughs> There's so much more to the story than that. Oh, yeah? How so? The Relay started back in 1985 with just one guy. One guy? Yeah, Dr. Gordy Clapp. He wanted to show what someone fighting cancer endures, so he proved it by running around a track for 24 hours, and he raised $27,000 that first year. I can't imagine doing something like that. That's quite impressive. Neither could Gordy. Believe it or not, next year, one of his patients, Pat Flynn, joined Gordy, and they structured a team-based relay event and they combine the strength of families and friends to raise awareness and funds for the fight against cancer. Wow, it's pretty impressive how just a couple of people can create something so amazing. Well, Relay keeps becoming even more impressive. Over the last 27 years, ACS and their volunteers and staff have made this the largest not-for-profit activity in the world. So how many people are participating in Relay now? Over 4 million people will participate in Relay for Life in 2012. Mm -hmm. And 5,200 relays in the United States and approximately another 1,000 in 20 other countries. Relay is growing every year. It is really becoming a global movement. Well, if we're going to save more lives faster, every one of us has to work to involve as many people as we can and, and raise as much money as we can to support the American Cancer Society. And we need to support their research their outreach programs, their education, their community services and support. We don't apologize for our, what we call our passionate aggression <laughs> to end this disease. We, we ask others to join Relay, to make contributions to the American Cancer Society, and, and we need people like you. <laughs> and you. We're fighting to save more lives faster. That's how you got all these people here? You just told them the story and asked them to come? Yeah and we made sure they knew the Relay story so they could ask someone to join them. When we walk together, we are bigger than cancer. Join the world's biggest fight for more birthdays. The American Cancer Society Relay for Life.